Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvid, and I believe there's been an update to Bad and Cinderella. If you haven't seen my first playthrough of this, there should be a link somewhere. Editor me, please remember to put it there. But for those who haven't seen that video, I think I'll take it from the top and start at the beginning. If you just want to get right to the new stuff, you can go to the timestamp of whatever Editor me has put on the screen right now, because I hope she remembered to do that. She's very tired. Fairy tales. Everybody loves fairy tales, right? Stories where true love and pure hearts always prevail. They're so ideal in a world where so many things can go horribly wrong. In this life, wicked people go unpunished. The right and just and fair suffer beneath them, too honest and good to do anything about it. Those who do rise above their nature often find themselves in a cruel twist of fate, becoming the villain. It's so sad, isn't it? Wouldn't you just rather read something fluffy and lovely and nice? I would, but I'm here for this story. No, no, I don't think you would. Because of all the places you could have gone to, seeking your idle entertainment, you came here. You want to see something sad and unfortunate, right? I suppose... Then you've come to the right place. I happen to have with me a very sad story to tell. It's a story about a man driven to madness, desperately pining after the woman he loves. A woman he let slip through his fingers many years ago. He's such a sad man, you know. But, as unfortunate as his plight is, his own end is nothing but his own fault. I wonder if you're hoping he dies. Or maybe you think you can find the good ending. I don't think you can. You underestimate how determined I am. Men who chase love for no other reason than to satiate their heart's desires aren't ever truly in love. They're only vacuums. They're only creatures too sick and starved to ever survive. Dang it! What do you mean everybody knows? Oh my gosh, she's so cute! I thought the castle staff was just some faceless butler, but oh my gosh, she's so cute! M my apologies, your majesty. I, I had nothing to do with it, I swear. How many people have you told? Uh, only you. When I heard the private affairs of your majesty's divorce floating around, I... I made immediate haste to let you know. Well, that's not very helpful if it's gotten this far, is it? Get out of my sight, now! Yes, sir. A thousand apologies, sir. She's so pretty. What a headache. If everybody knows about the divorce, I'm going to be the laughingstock of my peers for God knows how long. That woman is honestly such a gossip. It's been only one month since Sylvia, my beloved wife, made her plans to leave me be known. Something about falling in love with another and needing to follow her own heart's desire. I was dreading something like this happening. It wasn't often a king had his marriage so carelessly cast aside. I'm being left. I'm being divorced. My wife of six years is leaving me. For a commoner. <gasps> dang it, dang it, dang it! Doesn't she know what I sacrificed for this marriage? It's not about love. It was never about love to begin with. It's a political marriage. It's not supposed to be fun. It's not like I loved her much anyways. I was the one who had to smooth over any of her social transgressions with the wives and daughters of other courts. It was always presented like a noble sacrifice we would have to both bear for the sake of the greater good. Even an affair would have been better than this. At least then, the burden of reputation management wouldn't have been placed all on me. It's not fair! She gets to skip off into the sunset with her new lover, while I'm stuck here to pick up the pieces. What am I going to tell her father? 
No matter how you slice it, this is going to be heck. Hmm. Ella would never have done anything like this to me. A long time ago, it was just me and her. While the rest of the castle was content to leave me be, she stood out among them all and offered her personal friendship to me. Ever since we were children, she was mine and mine alone. You could say it was love, but there was something special about how it bloomed between us. We'd started as children, so innocent in the world, we grew up alongside one another. Over time, it became deeper, and there was nobody else in this world who made me feel the way she did. But then, I guess maybe my fate is fitting. When my 21st birthday arrived, I was tasked with finding a suitable wife to govern the country with. My parents had their preferences, and I, the fool I was, just assumed Ella would always be there for me. Even through my marriage. When we held the ball to determine who my bride would be, I hadn't planned on inviting her. She was only a servant. But she showed up anyways. And something inside me found that offensive. It was embarrassing. She couldn't even afford to dress properly. And in front of my parents, too. These were my peers. She had meant well, but these were my peers. I didn't do anything when they scolded her and sent her away. I figured I could find her and apologize later. But when I went to find her, I was told that she'd left. All of her things were just... gone. Could anyone blame me, though? You've got to do what you've got to do. Surely there was something else we could have worked out. At least, that's what I tell myself. This isn't the first time Ella has crossed my mind. Not by a long shot. Sure, Sylvia was beautiful and affluent. She was the cream of the crops, a bride to be envied by suitors far and wide. She had such an innocent glow and a spellbinding allure. I was able to recover from my loss, temporarily. I poured my heart into Sylvia. Then we married and I became king. I was no longer her fairy tale prince. I became an obstacle to be avoided, and yet a resource to be harvested. We began to fast loathe one another quite easily. During the coldest moments of our marriage, my mind began to drift towards the warmth I'd felt with Ella. Some nights it was all I had to fall asleep with. She would float in and out of my mind, like a ghost fermented in my misery. Oh, my darling Ella. If only you'd stuck around. I wonder if she misses me at all. I wonder if she ever moved on. No, no, she wouldn't have done something like that, would she? She'd never just move on. N no way! How could I have been so stupid? How in all these years had I never considered that she could find anyone else? The thought is making my skin crawl. Maybe she's understood the situation. Maybe she gets it. Maybe she's still my Ella. If not mine, who else's? Dang it! Hmm? It hits me like a ton of bricks. I'm about to be alone for the first time since she's left. And I don't even have my consolation prize to show for it. I'm the laughingstock of the kingdom. And for what now? Why does it boil my blood to think that maybe she's no longer mine? For so long, I just assumed she would remain the way I remember her. But it's not uncommon for women to find other men too, is it? In fact, for all I know, some other guy could have swooped in the second she left. How do I even know she didn't leave with another guy? My Hella wouldn't do something like that, would she? She would never leave me forever. I guess it shouldn't matter too much either way. It was just a flame. What she's doing right now shouldn't interest me. It's just the divorce in my head. It's making me irrational. I can't be so hung up over. Hmm. I should go to bed. 
I can't let something like this eat at me so much. One week later. Aha! I've done it! I've finally done it! The paperwork is all finished. Heh. She wanted a divorce, right? That's fine, then. Once these are all processed, I'm free to go looking for my Ella once and for all. All those gossiping noble buttheads can rot for all I care. I gave up everything for this darn kingdom, working myself to death, only to have my wife ready to run off with a wandering tradesman. That's fine. I can't bring myself to care any longer. If that's how it is, so be it. It won't be much longer until I'm reunited with a love of my own. If Sylvia can just take whomever she pleases as her lover, so can I, right? This time, I'll choose my Ella. We'll make things the way they should have been all along. I have to admit, holding these papers in my hand now feels different from what I was expecting. At first, I thought it would mean the end for me. Who doesn't feel that way when they're getting divorced in front of their whole kingdom and country? But now... Now I feel like I'm on the cusp of freedom. For so long, did I really put my own happiness aside? Did I really withstand lonely nights, sleeping in an empty bed? Did I accept being shunned and disrespected by this vile wretch? How could I do such a stupid, stupid thing? I don't want to live like this anymore, and I won't live like this for much longer. I know what happiness she brought me, and I want that happiness again. I need that happiness again. I just need to feel loved. <sighs> and I know exactly who can help me find my Ella. <laughs> I'm sure if I ask politely, he'll tell me everything I need to know. And I believe that is, yeah, that is where the first part ended. So, we're going into new territory here. Haha, <laughs> are you actually serious about this? Who is that? Who is talking? That is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. No, absolutely not. Oh, I guess you didn't ask polite enough. <laughs> oh my! Oh my stars! A disgruntled magical person looking looking magical person they have no written all over their face what do you mean you won't do it I'm your king you work for me you have to <laughs> Ezra is the goat he's only been on screen for five seconds and he's the greatest check your facts again majesty I'm an oracle not a wizard for hire I read prophecies and act as a divine conduit I don't make love potions and I don't stalk exes it's not stalking. It's totally stalking. I mean, it kind of is. You're asking for the private whereabouts for a person without their permission. That's weird. You're being weird. I don't recall asking for your opinion. This is a matter of true love. You wouldn't get in the way of true love, would you? Oh, absolutely. I do it all the time. Ah! But this isn't love anyways. This is infatuation. You're aware of how you feel, but you've got no clue if this Ella feels the same way. You're basically asking for divine retribution going about it this way. Even if I could magic you up a love potion. Which I can't. <clears throat> what you'd get wouldn't even be love anymore. You'd get a hollow husk of a human being with none of the autonomous thoughts or feelings that makes them themselves. It's just a lousy way to go about it in general. And it makes anyone who stoops that low kind of pathetic. Hmm. So, there's nothing you can do? No. Fine. Then, what can you do? <sighs> if you promise to leave me out of this after, I can consult the stars to see if you're really as meant to be as you say. It's not a promise, and there's a good chance you really won't like the answer. Most people don't. But 
It's the best way to figure out if you've got a chance at all, or if you're wasting both of our time. Oh, he's so happy. Really? Yes, yes, that's perfect! Let's do that. How soon can we start? Let's just get this over with now, so I can get back to work. Oh, wait. Ah, wrong person reading that. I'm not a fan of his attitude, but there's only ever one oracle in the world at any given time. Beggars can't be choosers, and the royal oracle has never been wrong. In times of war, famine, and pestilence, their sacred wisdom has been vital. Of course, with as much as he costs us, Ezra's services are mine to wield for all those reasons and more. The least he can do is act like it. As a divine prophet, Ezra is the closest thing to a god that I can actually consult. I don't like the idea of leaving the fate of my love to chance, but I know that the love we did share was real. If I could just have one more chance, I know she'd see that too. Once this jerk sees how destined we are for one another, he'll have to offer up the full extent of his capabilities to the cause. Oh, this, this is gonna blow up in your face, isn't it, friend? Right? So, this is about love, is it? You're only looking to see if you're meant to be together. No, no, something more specific. I want to know what I've got to do to be together. Still not how this works. Prophecy is a prediction. It's the end result, not the instructions. If I had the means to tell people how to get everything they ever wanted, I doubt I'd be doing this sort of work right now anyways. I can, at most, see what will happen if you continue down this path. You just need to decide what it is you plan on pursuing. I'm pursuing my love, then. My Ella. Whatever it is I've got to do, I'll do it. Mm -mm. So be it. Mm -hmm. Uh... Oh, God. What? What is it? What do you see? Mm -mm. I... I can't do this. I can't be a part of this. <laughs> your your compatibility is in the negatives. Don't keep me in suspense. Tell me how it went. Don't do this. Whatever you're planning, whatever it is you've got in mind, just don't. T why, though? I don't understand. It's not just not meant to be. Chasing after this Ella person isn't going to end well. I can't tell for whom yet, and that's the biggest problem. A prophecy is never crystal clear, but usually it's legible. For you, though, all I see is an unreadable agony. Please? <laughs> no. No, that can't be right. Unreadable agony? How? There, there must be some mistake. I'm not intending to harm anybody. I only want to find my beloved. That's all. Intent isn't everything. No good deed goes unpunished, you know. Everything you do has consequences. Many of them, if not all, are beyond your control. I get it. Love is powerful, and the heart wants what it wants. But some things aren't just not meant to be in the passive sense. To go forward in this direction now is to be willingly ignorant of the harm you will cause. Mm, that's not sounding too good. You don't understand. You're not getting it. I... I love her. I love her with all my heart. And true love always finds a way. That's how it's always been. There has to be something I can do. You can... you can do nothing! <laughs> no. The answer is no. Whatever you do, whatever you try, this is the end result. I understand your position may make it hard to understand that you can't have everything you want. Granted, you are above me. But nobody can outwit, outrank, or outsmart fate. Even a king. Hubris will be your downfall if you choose to follow this path. 
The stars won't grant me access to your fate, but I don't need them to give you a prophecy of my own. Abandon your selfish quest for your own satisfaction. Someone like you, so discontent to sit with himself, will never be happy. You'll bring misery to anybody you love, and then you will eat them alive. Beep. Miserable. That's all he is. He's just a miserable man. I feel sick. I feel like everyone is conspiring against me. Ella can't be off limits to me, can she? My Ella? That's not fair. I... I can't live in a world where there's nothing I can do about that. This is my last chance at a happily ever after. She was always meant to be mine. <laughs> of course, this was a horrible idea. An oracle has no sense of self or singularity. His head is up in the stars, calculating everything people like me live and suffer through as though they were small parts in a bigger plan. Why did I think he could understand what it's like? If it's not my parents, or my title, or my marriage denying me happiness, it has to be fate. Doesn't anybody care how I'm suffering in all this? It's not selfish if it's love, right? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. If I'm ever going to see this through, I'm going to need an ally of some kind. Admittedly, what I can do alone is very limited. Ezra was obviously the first choice, but it seems that he lacks the emotional depth to be able to understand my plight. No matter, that was merely the easiest way. All I have to do is find a means of locating Ella. Our natural chemistry and past affinity for one another will surely fill in the gaps from there. There's nothing I wouldn't do to reunite with my beloved. No matter how grueling or treacherous the circumstances, I will persist. Why? I would go so far as to say I would surely face down the mightiest of adversaries to win my love. The heck you mean the mightiest adversaries? A little snot- <laughs> A little snot-nosed pipsqueak like you who's never seen a day of action in his life? Ha! Uh, oh, Captain Winters. How lovely to see you out and about at this hour. Captain? Florin Winters. How do I loathe thee? Let me count the ways. <laughs> That's some boss music if I've ever heard it. Captain of the Royal Guard, not by my own doing, but by that of my late father's. He was the son of the kingdom's most renowned military general. A deal was struck between the houses that Florin would continue to serve the royal family. And then, so would his children, and so on, and so on. General Winters was most well known for winning impossible battles, humiliating every opponent who was so unlucky as to meet with him on the battlefield. His son was much younger and inexperienced, but wasn't the least bit hesitant to carry on the brutish legacy. As children, he used to push me around. He was strong, and he was angry and he didn't like it when Ella played with me over him. Uh-oh. Coming from peasant backgrounds, the two were familiar with one another. The children of the staff would frequently intermingle. Perhaps they'd been more familiar than I thought when Ella came to me. He didn't like the thought of having to share, and as small as I was in comparison, I never stood a chance. Luckily for me, I wouldn't have to put up with him forever. His father went to war and dragged him along for the ride. Florin was gone for five years. In that time, sure, he got bigger. But it didn't matter in the end. When he came back, I was the kind of man who could fight for the woman he loved. He wouldn't dare try to bully me like he did when we were young. That would have been seen as treason, and it would only serve to upset Ella even more anyways. She never could stand to see me hurt. <laughs> Holy cow! Him big. Uh, of course, Ella isn't here anymore. Uh, I guess this is the hard way of finding her. <clears throat> God, you're pathetic. You wouldn't last two minutes in combat. 
stuffed shirts like you make me sick. Excuse me? You dare to speak to your king that way? Pfft. <laughs> you honestly think I give a crap what you think? You can't touch me. So long as I hold buns and fight your battles for you, I'm fulfilling my end of the bargain. So, kindly, bite me. Ah, oh, he's so brutish. This rat butthead. You, you are such a child. Says the dip crap floating around pretending he's some kind of hero. Don't you have a job to do or something? Maybe a divorce to get back to? You... You do well to hold your tongue concerning matters of which you know nothing about. Oh, I know plenty. People talk. And that guy your wife ran off with? I bought him a beer! Looks like somebody backed the wrong horse, huh? The way he's smirking at me. I could have him locked away for that alone. Every ounce of my blood is boiling. He never deserved to win like this. He's always thought I didn't deserve my Ella. I've always been able to tell. But I loathe that he's so satisfied with the current situation. And I loathe even more that I can do nothing about it. You're just jealous. Ah, uh, I see what this is. This is just your jealousy, isn't it? A few sweet summers are better than none at all. There's practically a divot in the place where she used to hold my hand. Can you say the same? You slimy little... And for your information, Sylvia and I, I never cared for her anyways. That peasant louse can have her. I'm free now. Free to go and pursue my heart's true desire now. And I'll have you know, my fullest intention is to right this wrong and bring her back. That's more than you've ever been able to do either. I've always had more than you. I've always been able to provide for her better. The worst of our times together were more comfortable than any of the best days you could have given her. So many beautiful sunsets spent in my arms. Meanwhile, you were too busy living out your brooding hero fantasies. Don't you dare belittle my service to my country! While you were lazing around your ivory tower, I spent five years groveling in the dirt and among the corpses, making sure it wasn't overrun by the enemy. Maybe you should have thought about that before you decided to assume your sad little birthright. But you're right. You've done so much for this country. And as a token of my appreciation, I might allow you to catch a glimpse of Ella on our wedding day. Of course you'd feel that way. Was it not enough to throw her away like an old toy you were finished with? If you at all cherished the best parts about her, you wouldn't be treating her like an object to be bought and sold at your leisure. It's disgusting. Why did I suddenly give him a sudden a a southern accent? I don't know. If she could hear you right now, you'd think she'd be proud. you think she'd be grateful. You only got as much time as you did with her because your father wanted you out of his hair. Just one in a lot of pricks, using a girl to placate your caviar palates. When push came to shove, neither of you could commit to the promises you'd sold her. And she made the first, and best choice she'd ever make in a long time. Leaving your pathetic buns. And I'm darn proud of her for that. If I could do the same, I'd have joined her. Sir Chine Lo, send me and all my men to our deaths. The Ella I knew wouldn't take you back for all the money in the world. <laughs> Disgusting and black-hearted cowards were never her type. Ooh. Right. So about making allies. My hands are trembling with rage? My face is burning, too. I probably shouldn't have blown up like that. Maybe I know better. Hmm. He's right. If Ella could have seen that, she would probably be horrified. What have I become? My heart is ugly, isn't it? It's practically repulsive. Forgive me, father. 
for I have sinned. Oh, I'm so sad in my rose-covered bathtub, drinking my wine while bathing. Oh, the agony of it all. I love her. I don't know why people keep acting like I don't love her. She is all I think about. Isn't that consideration? But still, I'd never let her see me this way. I can't say I'm even proud of who I've become. Maybe something about marriage makes you dishonest. Maybe I'm being dishonest with myself. Maybe I'm jaded. Or maybe I just have nothing left to lose. Am I even making sense anymore? I know I'm a good person. Once upon a time, I used to be a good person. Maybe she knew better. If I had Ella back, I'd be set. It's all I need to leave this rotten cocoon behind. I could be her knight in shining armor, but right now I don't have a role to play. I haven't had one in so, so long. The last time I remember feeling happy was when Sylvia would look at me like I was her entire world, her savior. But that was all a facade, wasn't it? This is my rotten bile to choke on. <laughs> Whatever the case may be, I need my deliverance too, don't I? I can be saved yet. Ella, please wait for me. I will become devoted. I will be loyal. Let me return to the beauty of your shade, and I will forever covet your brilliance. This time around, we can do it by the book. I may be king now, but I'll forever be your prince if you'll play the part of the princess. Ah, is the game over already? Well, I guess it is free. You get what you pay for. Hello, this is Hamardia again. Hello, Hamardia! Good to see you again. I love the shade of green of your hair. Just a brief update. I've decided from now on, I'll update path by path. If you want to see where both routes take you, you may want to check in from time to time. A single path takes about a few hours to work at, so it's light on me enough to not be a chore. It's just a nice way to let out some steam and learn more about programming. I'm worried whether or not this segment was particularly cruel, but then I remembered, this isn't supposed to be a happy game. Not yet, at least. I wonder, are you cheering for his death now? Or wouldn't you mind having someone so utterly devoted to you and desperate to make amends? How nice would it be to be the one who got away from any certain someone in your life who wronged you? How badly would you like to see them writhe? Oh wait, does that mean Ella might actually be bitter? I'm still thinking about that party. That dress was probably made by mice. She's probably mad. That would be hilarious if she was mad. She's not living a happy life somewhere that he'll take away from her. She's mad. She's, she's coming after him. She's building a rival kingdom just to storm his gates. Some people want to fix broken people. Some people want to watch them destroy themselves. I suppose, as art, it's all subjective. You take from it what you will. But it's been fun this far. That being said, please be mindful again. This kind of stuff can get heavy. If you feel like this story is going to remind you of people you know and want to avoid, you should stop. Immediately. Take into consideration if you're in a place to consume unpleasant media. Are you able to consent to something that could get particularly unsetting? That's really important. Of course, I should mention again, this kind of content really isn't suitable for kids. And please, do not use this to feed any sort of impulse to react to these kind of stories in real life. Same with horror stuff. This kind of story extends to examine the psyche and human condition. Imitating it or using it to fuel or support legitimate forms of harm is going directly against my own wishes. I know, I know, a bit of a nag, but it's not fun if everyone isn't having fun. For now, though, I'll return eventually with another path. There's still a good chunk to come. Woohoo! I am excite! I am excite for that. A great game is never rushed. Well, that was my second playthrough of Bad End Cinderella, the demo. If you'd like to see the first one, maybe there's a link to it. I don't know. Maybe I've forgotten the future. 
but I'd love to know what you think in the comments, so you can write something down there and I will do my best to see it. And as always, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself, have a great night, and remember, there is always hope.